Watch this video all the way to the end to learn how to use voicing to improve your saxophone sound. Have you ever had trouble playing an altissimo? Or have you had trouble sounding even across the entire range of the saxophone? Or what about playing out of tune and not too sure about how to adjust the pitch and fix it? Well, all of these issues and more can be addressed when we study this idea of voicing. In his book, Voicing, An Approach to the Saxophone's Third Register, my mentor and famed saxophone pedagogue, Donald Sinta, explains voicing like this. Voicing refers to an awareness and control of the muscles and soft, flexible tissue in the oral cavity and vocal tract. To better conceptualize what we're after, try these things. The first thing to try, if you can, is to whistle. And whistle a bunch of different pitches, high and low, and pay attention to what your tongue is doing to get these various sounds. So do the same thing and hum several notes, high and low. And again, pay attention to what your tongue is doing. Lastly, try to bite the very tip of your tongue. And without moving the corners of your mouth, say the syllables E, then follow it up by saying the syllable AH. Pay attention to what the back of your tongue is doing to produce these two syllables. You might notice that when you say the syllable E, the back of your tongue raises a little bit, and then when you say AH, the back of your tongue relaxes down. This might be similar to what you were feeling when you were whistling and when you were humming. The higher pitches, have a slightly higher tongue position, and the lower pitches have a slightly relaxed and lower tongue position. Now, I'm not saying that when you play the saxophone all the time, high notes equal high tongue position and low notes equal low tongue position. It's a bit more complicated than that. But what I am saying is that these exercises are great introductions to learn what's required of us on the inside of our mouths. Hornis, Sarah Willis, has a very powerful video that gives us a look at the inside of her mouth while she's playing her instrument. Pause this video and check out the link in the description below to see what I'm talking about. Now here are three voicing exercises that I practice every day to better control my instrument. Overtones are a very basic tool that we can use to heighten your awareness of the oral palate. The idea is that we're trying to skillfully pick out one of the overtones out of the series while fingering the fundamental pitch. If you're new to this, I would start on a D. First, I would finger the low D while playing the fourth line D. Once I have control over that note, I then slur down to the fundamental, which is the note that I'm fingering. Do this a couple of times until the slur is extremely smooth. Also, it's imperative that you do not move your embouchure to produce any of these notes. Everything should be produced by focusing the movement of your tongue and oral cavity, as we discussed before. After the D, then move up a half step and do the same thing on an E flat. Repeat this process until you get all the way up to the top of your horn. Then return to the low D and move down to the low C sharp to produce the octave above that. Then to the C, then the B, and finally the B flat. Once I finish the first series of overtones, 
which is an octave above the fundamental, I'll move to the second series, which is an octave plus a fifth above the fundamental. So I'll start by fingering a low B flat and sounding an F, an octave and a fifth above that. Then smoothly try slurring down to the low B flat. I repeat this all the way to the top of the horn. This may be considerably harder since you're higher in the harmonic series and approaching the altissimo range. So don't get discouraged if this takes several attempts over the course of several days to get the hang of it. Continue to push past the second series to the third, fourth, and fifth, and beyond. Next, try doing the first two series in reverse. Start with sounding the bottom note, then slur up to the top note without using the octave key and without changing the amount of pressure on the reed. Execute all of these with the shape of your tongue. If you have any trouble with any of these, try starting with your octave key and then take it off to see if you can sustain the pitch. Or try starting on a note that you can play, then slur up chromatically to the note you are having issues with. Once you get to the target note, hold it out for quite some time. This will give your body some time to memorize that position. Also, you want to make sure that the overtone sounds pure and void of any remnants of the fundamental. If you hear the fundamental starting to creep into your sound, try keeping your tongue higher. Don't let the instrument tell you when you're ready to move. You dictate to the instrument what to do. That's how we control it. Now, these are very basic voicing exercises. There are more advanced things that we can do, and I might save that for another video, but we must first learn how to control the saxophone in the most fundamental way. And when we do that, it directly relates to the ease of your playing. The second thing I do are exercises with the mouthpiece alone. Sitting at the piano, I start out by playing an A. Then I try to match it on my mouthpiece. After playing that A on the mouthpiece, try articulating quarter notes, keeping the pitch very steady. If you find yourself scooping with each articulation, concentrate on keeping the tip of your tongue very close to the reed at all times. If you move your tongue too much with the articulation, it will affect your progress with the voicing, causing you to scoop. Then I try moving the pitch around. First a half step, then a whole step, and etc. You should only be adjusting your tongue position at best. Keep experimenting until you find some success. And remember, be patient. And at times, I'll even try playing a very simple chord progression on the mouthpiece, as you can hear in this clip. The next great exercise is pitch bending. On as many notes as I can, I try to voice them down a half step. This definitely helps with flexibility and it also helps to open up the sound. Try bending larger intervals when you can get the hang of just moving the notes down a half step. Note 
that the focus of the sound should virtually remain unchanged when you're bending the pitch. If you notice that your sound gets very airy and unfocused as you bend downward, that's just a sign that you may be adjusting your embouchure to reach these pitches. Try several times just keeping your jaw still at all costs. Voicing is a skill that all saxophonists should dive into. And I can personally say my sound, my intonation, and the control of my saxophone can all be directly attributed to my awareness and my approach to voicing. The amount of control gained is a direct relationship to your frame of mind and how mindful and diligently you practice these concepts. Just remember to practice slowly, practice carefully, and practice patiently. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website at robertyoungsaxophone.com. That way you can get immediate updates as I release new videos in the weeks to come.